Welcome to Bonaventure Cemetery, one of the most iconic and picturesque resting places in Savannah, Georgia. Join me as I guide you through the fascinating history and stories that make this cemetery a must-visit destination. Bonaventure Cemetery spans over 100 acres and was established in the late 18th century. The cemetery currently sits on the site of a former plantation. This plantation was owned by Colonel John Mulrine, who named it Bonaventure Plantation, meaning good fortune. Mulrine's daughter, Mary, married Josiah Tottenall Sr. By 1771, Mulrine and Tottenall saw good fortune as their plantation expanded to over 9,000 acres, comprising most of the Savannah region. However, once the American Revolutionary War broke out, Mulrine and Tottenham both pledged their loyalties to Great Britain. They even helped Royal Governor James Wright escape back to England by hiding him in the Bonaventures until he could board a ship home. As with the case with all Loyalists in Georgia, they were seen as traitors and stripped of their land. Their plantation was sold at auction in 1782 while Tottenell fled to England and Mulrine escaped to the Bahamas where he died a few years later. John Habersham purchased a 750 acre tract which he sold back to Tottenell's son Josiah Jr. a few years later. With Bonaventure plantation back in the family, it became the final resting place for the Tottenell family. The first burial plot on the land belongs to Josiah's wife Harriet in 1802. One of the most celebrated figures here is Johnny Mercer. The renowned American lyricist and composer, Mercer's timeless songs include Moon River and Skylark, have left an indelible mark on the world of music. He found his final resting place here in 1976. Another notable figure laid to rest in Bonaventure is Conrad Aiken, a Pulitzer Prize winning poet and novelist. His evocative writings continue to captivate readers and remain a significant part of American literature. The story of Gracie Watson is one that has long intrigued visitors to Bonaventure. Gracie was just six years old when she passed away from pneumonia in 1889. Her memorial, a stunning sculpture by John Walls, depicts her likeness and continues to evoke a sense of innocence and sorrow. One of the most notable and visited monuments in Bonaventure Cemetery is of Corinne Elliott Lawton, born in 1846. Corinne was the eldest daughter of Confederate Brigadier General Alexander R. Lawton, whose own monument stands behind hers overlooking the river. His monument features a life-size sculpture of Jesus Christ at Heaven's Gate. One of the most iconic items from Bonaventure Cemetery is the Savannah's iconic Bird Girl, a 50-inch sculpture in bronze. The statue depicts a young girl standing wistfully with two bulls in her hands. The original Bird Girl was creation of Sylvia Saw Shaw Judson, a highly regarded sculptor whose works have been displayed at prestigious art museums and even the White House. 
For more than half a century, the Bird Girl stood undisturbed in Bonaventure Cemetery. In the early 1990s, it was spotted by photographer Jack Lee, commissioned to produce a cover image for an upcoming book about Savannah. That book, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, captivated Savannah into the national spotlight, and with it, the statue of the Bird Girl that became the emblem of the work of the city it portrayed. The Bird Girl statue is now on display in the Telfair Academy. As you explore Bonaventure Cemetery, you'll discover not only the stories of these notable individuals, but also the rich tapestry of history that weaves through each tombstone and monument, from the stunning Angel of Mercy statue to the peaceful serenity of the surrounding nature, Bonaventure offers a unique and memorable experience. Thank you for joining me on this walk through Bonaventure Cemetery. May you find inspiration in its history, solace in its beauty, and a deeper connection to the past as you explore this remarkable place.